Only a junior, though, could come back. But she is a phenomenal talent who loves big moments. A big, boisterous crowd expected today. Maryland draws well at the Xfinity Center. And a trip to the Sweet 16 is on the line as the Terrapins win the opening tip, and we are underway. Florida Gulf Coast in a man-to-man defense to start. They're giving up a lot of height to this long and lanky Maryland team. Angel Reese with the first shot of the afternoon on that topic. She's 6'3". Big scramble for it. It comes free to the point guard Morehouse out in front. And the kick out. Bell on the attack. No on the layup. So that's what's going to be three pointers and layups generally, as you mentioned, for the Eagles. No question about it, but you're talking about this Florida Gulf Coast team that likes to play defense too. Owusu will drive that one home, a three-pointer. Ashley Owusu, the six-foot junior, who had 24 in round one. And there's the triple from the corner to get things started for Florida Gulf Coast. Kendall Spray, a 45% shooter from range. You need to find her. That was a contested three. So this Florida Gulf Coast team has taken the most threes in the country this season. Now looking for the answer, an off-target there by Miller, but a second effort by Reese up and in. Truly one of the great rebounders in the country. She is second in the country in offensive rebounds with 5.4 a game. She is relentless when it comes to second and third chance opportunities for Maryland. List will back it out beyond the three-point line. Florida Gulf Coast coming in with only two losses all year, 30 and two. And from downtown, it won't go for Bell. The honorable mention All-American, Reese beating everyone to the other end of the floor for two. That's why we said pace and space. These two teams want to push the tempo and get easy offense like that. Reese was sprinting and got a great touch and finish. Morehouse with a misfire. Reese again to the other end, and she's going to be dragged down and a foul. And she will get up quickly, but back to that transition. Well, what Florida Gulf Coast will do, they'll only send one to the offensive boards. They want to get back and be able to contest their in fast break transition opportunities for their opponents. But that time, Angel Reese just put on the Jets with those long arms. Got a great catch and finish. Emma List with the foul. Reese makes 67% at the line. Kind of a quiet round one for her. Efficient, 15 points, nine rebounds against Delaware. She's solid what she presents defensively as well. She's a member of the defensive team in the Big Ten. Well, she has six points here, 9-3, Maryland. Welcome, everybody, to the Xfinity Center, College Park, Maryland, round two, the Spokane region, Maryland, the number four seed, and Florida Gulf Coast, the number 12 seed, Dave O'Brien, Christy Winters, Scott with you. The winner advancing to the Sweet 16 in Spokane, Washington. Great to have you with us. And a quick start, Christy, for Maryland. Big size advantage for the Terrapins. No question about it. It's all about pace, space, and buckets made in this game. Florida Gulf Coast, they love to shoot those threes, but don't get it twisted. They like to get in the paint as well. Kick out here for Spray. And look for three-pointers all day long. That is the key to success for the Eagles. They have shot an astounding number, made an incredible number. They average 11. Capital One starting lineup here for Maryland, by the way. Led by Angel Reese at 6'3", the sophomores averaging 17 points, 11 rebounds a game. On the run, Morehouse, and bank that one in. She is playing on a bit of an ailing foot, plantar fasciitis kicking up. After that Virginia Tech game in round one, she was sore, was in a boot after that game, actually, but she is ready to play today. She didn't go full speed yesterday, just did the shooting portion of their two-hour practice. That's a great start for her. The 5-3 senior. Reese went for the bounce pass and a foul with 6.58 to go here in the first quarter and then an offensive. Florida Gulf Coast, the number 12 seed, and here's a look at their Capital One starting lineup. Morehouse running the point spray. Fills, List, and Bell. Kirsten Bell, one of the top players in the country. And the Eagles lucky to have her back after late January surgery for a partially torn meniscus. She was out for nine games with that partially torn meniscus, but you can't tell. I mean, she had an amazing game in their three-point victory over Virginia Tech in the first round. Maryland number 13 in the poll. Florida Gulf Coast number 23. And clashing here. Florida Gulf Coast, by the way, just one for four from three-point land to get started. 
And that one is on the money for Diamond Miller, who had an outstanding round one. And she needed to have that game. In their loss against Indiana in the Big Ten tournament, she only had four points, but she was herself in that first game against Delaware in the first round. Second effort, back to Bell, lining up a three ball, but no. So immediately, anyway, they're not falling. They're one for six. They're not going to stop shooting, though. That's the thing. They will take those threes. They have taken the most in the country coming into this game. 1,158. Just incredible. On the back down, Bibby, the little turnaround. That'll spin out. Chloe Bibby's had some big games. 23 against Minnesota, 22 against Rutgers, 23 against Nebraska. She can be a major factor today. No question. The balance of Maryland with five players who average in double figures, that can be a problem. Phils will rip one from three-point land. And that could be a problem as well. Phil is shooting 36% from three, but such a strong leader. A Sun all academic team member. Miller with a step back three. Maryland coming in at 22 and 8. They went 13 and 4 in the Big Ten. Florida Gulf Coast 30 and 2. Here's Spray to connect from three-point land. Spray knocks in on average three made threes a game. And that was the second one for her today. Both of them, Dave, contested. She is a tough shot maker for Florida Gulf Coast. Florida Gulf Coast, they can tighten up a game in a heartbeat, can't they? Owusu, line driver for two. She's got a lot of different shots in her game. No question about it, and she is back on pace as well. Here's Phils. Nobody picked her up, but a misfire. Well, Ashley Owusu missed four games of her own late in the season for Maryland. And Miller on the attack takes the hit. Maryland on top by three. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? The celebration on Friday. The Eagles in the locker room. Well, we're amazed. We were watching it courtside here. Everybody else was too. Yes. In Maryland, they were glued to our monitor. Tough to, tough to have that one sink in. But a great effort by Creighton. And it's games like that that memorable tournaments are made. No question. And Caitlin Clark over eight down the stretch there. And Monica Sonano leads the country in field goal percentage shooting. And and this is a shot. You rarely see her miss right there in front of the rim. Do you think she had a dribble? I think she had time for a dribble with 3.4 seconds, I believe it was, left. I think she could have put it down one time. Spray into the corner here for Cecil, who is tripped up, hits the deck. It was with eight on the shot clock. Andrea Cecil, the grad out of Oak Harbor, Ohio, had some really nice minutes off the bench in round one. She did. And they need that kind of balance they have three players who average in double figures for the Eagles. List on a hard drive with the left hand. That won't drop. Sellers out of the pack with it. She has had one of the great assists already in this tournament. The scoop not there for Miller. Sellers had that behind the back assist to Diamond Miller in the first round. I'm sure you've seen it by now. If not, go find it. That was a great pass. And that won't touch anything way off the mark by Spray. Of course, Maryland, under the guidance of the great Brenda Fries, 20th year, winning as coach in Maryland history. She's won 79% of her games. Cross Mesco started the program in 2002. He's won 610 games in his outstanding career, but trying to get Florida Gulf Coast into the Sweet 16 for the first time. And that would be sweet. And Carl Smesco, the hardest working person I know in terms of getting all the tactical things down and getting his team prepared to compete and win. I mean, 30 and 2 coming into this game, beat LSU early in November, and then beat Michigan State in a double overtime game by one point. They just have that toughness and the no fear about approaching every game is really fun to watch.
Tara Cox with the foul. Collins the entry and down it goes. She's a 6'3 junior out of Louisiana. Amy Collins, another player who can strike in the painted area for Maryland. Very determined drive by Cecil there to make it 18 to 13 Maryland. Maryland, the number eight scoring team in the country. They average 79 a game, but they're coming off 102, a turnover. Cox with it. Always looking to fire the three in transition. Here's Bell. Played in a lot of foul trouble the other day, but a sweet shot there. She fought her way out of that and had a big game. She is just flat out tough and wants the big moment. She had 32 points when they beat OSU early in the season. And she says, hey, we're a mid-major team, so we want to take advantage when we have opportunities to show who we are. And they believe they were slighted at a 12 seed coming into this tournament. Skippy to drive it. Tough move there. It won't fall. She hits the deck. Numbers here for the Eagles. Morehouse will give it up. And on the drive once again, it's Cecil. She's becoming a real factor in this tournament. You can get lulled to sleep with trying to guard that three-point line from Florida Gulf Coast, but then they will rip and take it to the basket and finish inside that restricted area. Not a lot of mid-range shots taken at all by Florida Gulf Coast. Bell, the lead pass ahead for C. He's going to lay that in. And an 8 nothing run for Florida Gulf Coast, and they have surged into the lead 19-18. And the Eagles fans who have made the trip are up and cheering behind their bench. Owusu straight on. That's a two-pointer. Maryland back in front. And Ashley Owusu brings to the table is not just another double-figure scorer, but she can ignite wow. the Terps team. Andrea Cecil doing everything she wants right now. Bibby quickly to the other end. Bell with the block. Bibby got it back. A tie-up. Out of the pack, here comes Morehouse. She's taking on everybody all by herself, but can't get it to go. Morehouse is quick as a hiccup in transition when she gets downhill. Watch out. She had 19 points against Virginia Tech. Also, nine assists and just one turnover, Dave. Yeah, they only turned it over three times in that game. Florida Gulf Coast, they were so good with the basketball. They're second in the country in assist to turnover ratio, 1.6 for them as a team. Collins cannot connect. Florida Gulf Coast up by one. 19 assists and three turnovers against Virginia Tech. In many regards, a near perfect game plan. Oh, no question. Final seconds of the first. And taken away by Benson. Katie Benson will back it out, fire a long one, and swish in the three. One of the best shooters in this tournament. Last season, Katie Benson led the country, shooting 50% from three. It went down this year to 44%. Oh, how about the quick step to Shara Morehouse, blowing right by, and got it to go. And at the end of the first quarter, well, this is of the game, the player said, if they take a mid-range shot. This is incredible, right? Florida Gulf Coast this season, 1,168 three-point attempts. Maryland, the last two seasons combined, hasn't even gotten there. I mean, that's just silly. Look at that. I mean, they're going to let it fly. Head coach Carl Smesco said, hey, we've got to take those shots. This is our style. We've had it for a long time and now the rest of the game is catching up with us analytically. Florida Gulf Coast however in the early going it's a little misleading because they have a bunch of layups but they have outscored Maryland in the paint 14 to 6 as Reese went up and took the hit and Angel Reese will be at the line the author of 16 double doubles this season tied at 23 as we begin the second quarter a foul on Bell number one Kirsten will tell you that she felt like she had two fouls getting off the bus the other day. <laughs> it was less than five minutes into the game against Virginia Tech, and she picked up those two quick fouls, and she said she was so frustrated that that was her situation in that game, knowing the importance of her presence on the court for her team. Well, you could tell she was angry about it. She was frustrated, but she turned it into a really fine game and a major reason they pulled off that upset. Carlos Musco said yesterday at practice, 
We played unselfishly down the stretch. She had a kick out to see for the triple that sealed the deal for them, and it was that kind of presence that they needed at that time. That's going to be Maryland ball. The trap worked, and they get the turnover. Well, that's where the length and speed of Maryland's defense can be disruptive. Look at the freshman, Cheyenne Sellers, just all overshadowing the basketball. Nowhere to go. So the Terps up by one. Already two turnovers for Florida Gulf Coast. Again, only three in the entire game on Friday. So he's swinging out high. Long one coming, Sellers. She hit the deck, no whistle there. And now Morehouse on the attack. List on the baseline, back to Morehouse. Long one coming, Spray, got it. Kendall Spray, who hit the bank three to beat the shot clock from 25 feet against Virginia Tech in the third quarter the other day. Kenny Brooks, the Hokies head coach, said that was the turning point in the game. More or less, that's what he said. Absolutely. I mean, you have shots like that, or shots like that by Angel Reese. I mean, they're momentum-changing buckets. Spray three out of five beyond the three-point line. That's her average, three made threes. Morehouse gave it up. Reese on the ground and calling for a timeout. She gets it. 7.50 to go here in the second. We're tied 26-26. Angel, by the way, with nine points and another touch for her. The sophomore from Baltimore. Here's Miller's shot on target and all net. Well, diamonds shine brightest in March. That was certainly true in round one. Well, she has been a gem in this NCAA tournament. And they have needed that from her. She is the X factor. She is the straw that stirs the drink for Maryland in terms of how they go on both sides of the court. Florida Gulf Coast with a turnover, and they've had four of them here. That tops what they did in round one, and picked off by Kirsten Bell. Bell averaging 23.7 rebounds a game. The swing here quickly for Spray. Got it. She's on fire. But how about the ball movement by Florida Gulf Coast? I mean, penetration, kick out, penetration, kick out. It happens before you can even think to move to contest. And they're finding number 10 as often as they can. She's made four of six from downtown. Everybody else, one for seven. He'll be launching too strong. Bell picks off the rebound. Florida Gulf Coast does a good job contesting threes. They hold opponents to just 28% from beyond the arc this season. Straight on. That one will ricochet away off the front of the iron. Cecil with the miss. This, by the way, the 12th year in a row that Maryland has gone to the NCAA tournament. Long shot. That'll spin in. And guess who's on fire right now? Diamond Miller. She is playing with a fire in her belly. And there she goes again. Miller shoved. Almost made it. And she will be headed to the line. She plays with so much personality and so much passion. But how badly does she want this game? Big time shots in this first half. And uh oh, the Jordanesque <laughs> tongue wagging and that fan of a triple with both hands there. But Diamond Miller, she missed a chunk of games at the beginning of the season, went out after only 10 minutes. Maryland's three point win over Baylor. You said it prior to the first game of the tournament. Look out for number one for Maryland as a game changer. She makes one of two. She already has 12.6 rebounds, two assists in this one. And Maryland needs that. They scored that free throw, now they can go into a containment one, two, two press. No traps in that because they don't want to give up easy offense on the back end. 
Morehouse with the kick, but she's on the line and turns it over. Five times now for the Eagles. Cheyenne Sellers, the freshman, getting a chest bump from her teammates because of the defensive effort. She comes in off the bench. She's a game changer as well, and she has really been afforded great opportunities because of the early injuries that Maryland has had. Miller, another touch on the spin and scoops it up. That won't fall. Big fight for the rebound. It came out of Collins' hands. And House will feed it back for C. Another good three-point threat at 40%. Morehouse will launch it. Got it! Oh, my. This Florida Gulf Coast team, boy, you really have to be disciplined defensively and apply more pressure to the ball. It may not just be on the contest. It's got to be on the pass to the shot. We'll stay on this end, Maryland ball. Yeah, you cannot give them any opening at all because they're deadly. Some deep water threes. First by Diamond Miller rattling that one in with some poise and having some fun. And Morehouse, a deep one for the Eagles. Let's take a look at today's Difference Makers, brought to you by CarMax. My teammates have been getting on me because I haven't dunked yet this year. I went for it, and I went in. Tell me how I look in the crowd. The moments of the tournament. Stanford's coming up a little later. Listen, if I'm Tara Vanderveer, I'd be laying out just like all of the Stanford players seeing Fran Belibi throw it down like that after that great block. What a phenomenal player. What a phenomenal moment in this tournament so far. In a close second, a reaction from her bench, <laughs> yes. which was priceless. But great, great <laughs> stuff. 33-32 Maryland. And this is turning into a dandy right away. Owusu with that sweet fall away. That won't go for her, though. She's got a lot down deep in that duffel bag. She's going to pull it out this afternoon. C will shovel it up and a miss. Florida Gulf Coast, the number 12 C, trying to spring another upset here in College Park Cellars. Oh, hit! And she hit it! And she's headed to the line! Goodness gracious. I don't know how she made that. You talk about command of your body. Only a puppy. She's a freshman. All net. Shot that one all the way down after getting hit. And let everybody know. Absolutely. I made the shot. She did indeed spray with the foul. She makes 79% at the line. And a nifty three-point play for the Terps. Bell at the line. C dumps it down to the star for two. A strike for Kirsten Bell. Kind of quiet early on with four. Florida Gulf Coast was working on that action yesterday. That slip to the basket. Maryland loves to switch defensively, and that action doesn't allow that to happen easily. Sellers jumping back beyond the three, but no, a little too strong. And a whistle. And a foul on the play with 3.47 to go. And that was Carly C. taking a tumble. And are they going to head to the monitor and take a look at this? I think they are. My Forsberg, Edward Selaski, and Kathy... Cornell, the officials, Mimi Collins whistled for the foul. There's a shot. Collins right there, number two, and there was an extra. And they're at the monitor. After the whistle, uh, the contact after the whistle is under review for a possible upgrade. So looking at flagrants here. The after the whistle contact is what they're examining. Take a listen for the whistle here. Yes. What do you think? 
I think they're going to upgrade it. That was definitely egregious, and we're going to get some clarification here. Maryland on top by two, 36-34 here in round two. They are still examining. They just came over to say that that's what they're looking for after the whistle contact. Well, the winner advancing to the Sweet 16 in Spokane, Washington. Here's the call. Okay, so after review, yeah. the contact after the whistle is deemed unnecessary and it's going to be penalized with an intentional foul. Both teams are, both fouls are team fouls. Florida Golf Course will shoot two free throws and retain possession at midcourt with 30 on the shot clock. And just what we thought. Excessive contact after the whistle. Take a look at it again. And Mimi Collins right there. The whistle blew about right there. And then there's the excessive contact afterwards. And the upgrade like we thought. So the explanation here for Brenda. And foul, intentional foul. After the whistle. That'll count as two team fouls also. Mm -hmm. Which could become critical. Florida Gulf Coast, a 66% shooting team from the line. Collins with her second foul. And the intentional foul, that's the final explanation. And that will send Florida Gulf Coast to the line. Could be a big swing here. Right. The spray, 80%, knocking those down. Spray hit some clutch free throws against Virginia Tech. They won that game by three in the Spray first round. 14, by the way. And the ball for the Eagles. As they have fought back to tie it. Spray again. Oh, man, is she cooking. Her last name fits what she is doing from the three-point line. She is spraying down threes all afternoon for Florida Gulf Coast. She has now hit five of them. Seven-nothing run here in a very short period of time that Maryland finally puts an end to. But Sellers will drop that in to make it 39-38. Here's Spray again. And a whistle on a play and a shove. And Angel Reese can't believe it, but another whistle. Well, Kendall Spray has just been fantastic. But look at the awareness. They know where they're going to be outside the arc. You saw Bell kicking it. They made the extra pass, and they're shooting arrows. And Carl Semesco says that's not just what they were doing there on the bench to celebrate. They want to be straight as an arrow with their mechanics with their three-point shots. Reese number two, Bell hustling, and she's on the line and an over and back on that line. Bell just ran out of space right here. Ooh, needed a size 10 instead of an 11 on that one. Both toes on the line. Seven turnovers for the Eagles. Twice as many as they had in round one. Look at the defense of Florida Gulf Coast. We praise their offense, but their defense has been top notch. Miller lines it up and sticks it. Diamond Miller, 14. Contested shot there. Bell was right there with her. That's going to be a double dribble. House thought she got bumped into taking that extra step. Well, the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship second round continues tonight on CBS, TBS, TNT, and True TV. For more information on tournament game times and networks, go to NCAA.com. Maryland looking for their horn set here. They can run multiple actions off of that. Olusu, her defender, went down and hits the shot. Foul on the play. And the six-foot junior out of Woodbridge, Virginia, to the line. 
This is what Ashley Owusu does so well. She surveys and finds that her option and opportunity to score is going to be called on that one. Great read and her strength, and she doesn't really show that much passion. That's a lot for her. Can't connect to the three-point play, but Bibby is on the line. Almost a second effort there for the Terps. We lead at 42-39. Here's Maryland's 1-2-2 containment press just over the half-court line. Brenda Freeze wanted it up further. She was just telling them, move it up a little bit. Be that grizzly bear with all that size and length. It's going to be a blocking foul on Miller of Maryland. Trying to defend and trying to stay with Cecil. It'll be her first. Diamond Miller was okay initially, but it was when she made the contact with her body. Under two minutes before halftime. And in the backcourt for Morehouse. Is that kind of a rocky first half? She's turned it over five times. Unlike her, as we said, Florida Gulf Coast only three team turnovers in their victory over Virginia Tech in the first round. Shot clock down to four. Morehouse drives it, went right into Miller, who blocked it away. Tremendous defense here by Maryland. And they have the basketball. Well, I love when teams get more excited on defensive plays. Diamond Miller with the huge rejection. And the bench was loving it as well. Owusu taking the baseline, lays it up, and it spins in. Maryland opening up a 44-39 lead. 8-0 run here for the Terps over the last minute 40. Back out top for Cecil. Approaching one minute to go before the break. Thrown away, picked off by Diamond Miller. Flying in, lays it in. And wait a minute, they're going to wave it off. That's going to be a travel. So no basket. 54.8 before halftime. Well, here's the steal. Diamond Miller getting into the gap. Getting the deflection and the steal, uh, and there was that extra step coming down with it. And Brenda Freeze was calling Diamond Miller to get back up so we can get into our press. Diamond was looking for some clarification on that one. Spray left open. I'm not sure why. <laughs> She's hitting everything in sight here in the first half, and that's going to be a traveling violation. Well, that's what you're giving up in the back of the press, and that's what Brenda Freeze was discussing yesterday at practice. Yes, we want to apply some pressure, but we have to do our due diligence on the back end to make sure we're contesting, especially players like Spray at the three-point line in transition. The Florida Gulf Coast rarely turns it over. They average about 11 a game during the regular season. They've had nine in this quarter. That is uncharacteristic, but credit Maryland for disrupting them offensively that way. Miller, back off for Bibby. Way downtown with the three. 15 seconds to halftime, 47-39 Maryland, and their crowd is really getting active. This is their largest lead. Bell on a heave. That won't drop, and that's the end of the first half. And Maryland takes a bunch of momentum into the locker room. Big time defensive energy by Maryland. Yes, they made shots but it was precipitated from their defensive effort and their discipline on that side of the floor. Well, Spray was really on fire, but Maryland went on an 11-0 run to end the half on top 47 to 39. So that's our score at the break here in round two. Now let's go to L. Duncan in the studio for halftime. Fourteen points off of those turnovers for Maryland, and they can ill afford that same kind of ratio in the second half here. 
In the meantime, for Maryland, opening up with the basketball in the second half, Reese has nine, Miller with 14, Owusu with 11. So they're getting that balance and a fast strike right away. Miller getting inside. Well, that's what Maryland wants to do. They want to get the ball into the paint. They want to attack you. They want to exploit the fact that they have a size differential and an advantage in there. You would think that number four for Florida, number one for Florida Gulf Coast, and that is Kristen Bell, will get some looks. And she does right away. They need to get her rolling because she didn't do a whole lot in the first half. No, she just got a piece of that one to deflect it to go the other way. But she needs to get into a rhythm, and we've seen it. She can score in bunches once she sees that ball go through the net, but just two of eight right now for Bell. Morehouse with the kick. Spray another touch back to the point guard. She will try and set something up as we are underway here in the third. Bell finds an open shooter, but a whistle, no basket there, and out. Oh, man. Lucky for Maryland. And that's just a display of the range that Kendall Spray possesses. Her heel was on the sideline, and it went down. Yeah, you get the feeling watching Florida Gulf Coast, as you and I have throughout the weekend, they would like a slightly wider court. They could really use it. He's swinging in the lane, and a whistle. Angel Reese just named an Associated Press All-American, also All-Big Ten first team, and to the Wooden Award ballot. And filed on that play by List, her second. They go right back inside, and she draws another foul. And Reese is only a sophomore. Missed half of the games last season with a broken foot. So Brenda Fries has said this is really like her freshman year because she had that disjointed freshman season. And it's been a rock on a team troubled by key injuries. Fills with their first foul, puts her to the line. As you were talking about last season to this season, what a difference. Well, she has just taken a stranglehold to her role on this team. She was a Big Ten honoree on the defensive team as well. So you were talking about all the other accolades, but she does it on both sides. And everybody should be a two-way player. So we need to stop saying if you're a one-way or two-way. She's a great defender. More you out. don't say that enough. Good job following her own miss. Back up top for C. She will drive it. A little bounce there, but no. C looked like she needed to use her left hand on that one at the angle she was going to the rim with. Usu. In and out, rebound comes to Miller, she'll lay it in. And this is a danger zone for Florida Gulf Coast. Maryland starting to really put the pedal to the metal. The Florida Gulf Coast did a good job of boxing out Angel Reese, the second best offensive rebounder in the country. But then here comes Donovan Miller on the other side with her long arms, corralling that one and putting it in easily. She's having another big game with 18. Back out for List. So Maryland switching defensively in their man-to-man. List working hard. That won't drop. 53-39. And another foul. And somehow Reese got the shot in the air, but she draws another whistle. Well, this is what separates Maryland. They have so many players, not only who can score, but you can rebound too. Look at Diamond Miller finding her way to the basketball. Her pursuit is relentless. And she doesn't give up on plays. Reese at the line. She says that she takes inspiration from Maryland's 2014 Final Four team. They lost in the first round of the ACC tournament, but rallied to race to the national semifinals. Reese says that Alyssa Thomas just got angry in that tournament. And they were out to kill people in that tournament after losing early in the ACC. So Maryland using that for inspiration on top 55-39. Bills up high, Morehouse. Miller on her. Nice cut inside, and the hit by Cecil for two. Florida Gulf Coast is like a blender. I mean, they are always moving in their motion offense. If you fall asleep for a second, they'll take you back door for an easy one like that. Over the top, and they're trying to slow down Owusu and hanging on her. 
And they foul her in the paint with 6.50 to go in the third. And Maryland beginning to look pretty comfortable. And Spray will pick up the foul. It's going to be number three on Kendall Spray. Well, Carl Smesco has demonstrated a lot of trust with his players. Kirsten Bell had four fouls early in the fourth quarter against Virginia Tech. She stayed in the game, never fouled out. Lucy keeps on driving it, lays it off, and one. Reese will go to the line. Maryland using their size advantage. Reese now 15. Bell is the only player for Florida Gulf Coast who stands at 6-1. Everyone else is 5-10 or less, and Angel Reese not only stands at 6-3, 6-4, but her arms go on as long as the day is. And she is just a problem inside the paint. Yeah, you mentioned it. She's the number two offensive rebounder in the country. Well, trouble here for Florida Gulf Coast. Shot clock is down to 10. And suddenly they're down by 17. Morehouse, shot clock at three. Got to get a shot in the air. She shovels it up. Rebounded away by C, and that won't fall on the second chance. You can see that she was a bit frustrated there, but there's Morehouse. With the theft, lays it up, and the foul will be committed by Katie Benson. And coming up next on ESPN, more from the second round. Number seven, Utah taking on number two, Texas, and number seven, Utah beating number 10, Arkansas, by 23 to advance. Texas is currently riding a 12-game winning streak. The Women's NCAA Championship, round two. Utah and Texas today at five at ESPN. Just some great games. And how about Iowa going out to Creighton? What a tough team they are. And they played some great defense down the stretch. Now winning at Iowa. Yes, not an easy thing to do. Moving on to the Sweet 16 is Creighton. Yeah, first time for them, so congratulations to Creighton. A hard-fought win, made the big shot. Benson outside the three, where she loves to live. Bibby nearly lost it. This third quarter, very profitable for Maryland on their home floor. Here's Diamond Miller to lift. And a crash for the rebound and taken away by Morehouse. Florida Gulf Coast needs to cut in to this deficit. They need a run of their own. And in this quarter, they're one for seven shooting it. And that won't get it done as the pass is picked off. Great defense once again, just in those gaps as Maryland off the ball, taking things away, especially touches to Bell. Here's Sellers, no. Rebound free in the corner. Collins did a great job firing that one off of Bell. Off her leg, so Maryland can retain. They got it done. They most certainly did. They were such a young group. You see Crystal Langhorn, Marissa Coleman, and Laura Harper sitting there. Laura Harper is now head coach at Coppin State over in Baltimore right now. So they're always here continuing to support Brenda Freeze and this program. And supporting Diamond Miller doesn't need a whole lot of help. 20 points for her already in this contest. Bills gave up the opportunity to shoot a three. Morehouse with a shot clock down to 10. Great defense again by the Terps. Here's a long one off the window, no. Rebound kicks free. Benson hits the deck and she draws the foul. Katie Benson, great hustle. She had 17 against Delaware the other day. And Maryland has opened it up 60 to 42. Katie Benson was scoreless in their loss against Indiana in the quarterfinals of the Big Ten Tournament. And both she and Diamond Miller really have come to play in this NCAA Tournament against Delaware. Both of them came out and played great. I know Benson was five of seven from three in that first round game. She's missed one foul shot all season. I don't want to jinx anybody. Oh no, Dave. But when you come in at 96%, I don't think you're worried about missing no. free throws, right? Right. See, I waited till that one went uh, down. Thank really. you very much. <laughs> a great partner. 
And I'm off the hook. It's all timing. Timing. But Florida Gulf Coast is not. They're down 20. And a 26 to 3 run in the last nine plus minutes for the Turks. C crossing over and will lay it in. Pretty move there. Pretty move created her own space. And that's what Carl Semesco, the head coach of Florida Gulf Coast, said yesterday in practice. We have to create our own opportunities, whether that's in fast break or in the quarter court. Over the top, Reese with the catch and made it. And she's off to the line again. There aren't many in this tournament who could have caught this. No. She has great mitts. That's what we used to say back in the day. You have great mitts down there. Good hands. Great catch. Corralled it. Took the bump. And will head to the line to finish the three-point play. Morehouse limping off the floor here for Florida Gulf Coast. We talked about the plantar fasciitis that kicked up in round one. She did wear a boot in practice, right? She had struggled with it. Carl Semesco said yesterday it's been something that hasn't bothered her much. But after that Virginia Tech game, she had to put a boot on because it was throbbing on her a little bit. So see they're paying close attention to that right foot right now on the bench. So Florida Gulf Coast trying to crawl back into this one. Here's Bell. They have to rely on her if it's going to happen, but she didn't shoot it. On three-pointer won't drop, and the rebound is tapped out. And will go the other way. Back over to Maryland, and they are in command. Well, right now, Bell needs to take command. The defender fell down and was out of that play. She was wide open and didn't take that shot. You've got to take the shot. Florida Gulf Coast 7 for 22 from three-point distance. Bell with 22 in round one and only four in this one. Rebound tipped by Bell and she'll pick the basketball up and they need a run in the worst way. Bell that missed badly. Maybe they just need to utilize a ball screen. I mean, with the size of Maryland, you're not going to be able to stop and pop over players like Angel Reese and Mimi Collins. And Kayla Webb now taking over the point guard duties for Florida Gulf Coast. Morehouse has struggled with turnovers in a big way. Sellers on the drive, fouled from behind by Spray with 2.33 to go in the third. Just love the upside of Sellers as the freshman. Spray with number four. Morehouse still working on that foot. She has seven turnovers. Well, what Maryland has as a team. Spray with the four fouls heading to the bench. She's been really the mainstay of the offense today for the Eagles. No question. She and Benson both are two of the active leaders in three point field goals made in the country. Top five historically for women's basketball. Benson at five and Spray at four. Kelsey Mitchell leads everyone with 497 made threes in her career from mm -hmm. Ohio State. And those two shooters you're talking about, they're they're getting up there. They are. Closing in. Here's Bell. Got it. Nothing but net for Kirsten yes. Bell. Right now they need to go to and go through Kirsten Bell right now. Just let her just go. She has to want that as well. Ball comes to her. She's got to stay aggressive. Ah, but the shots keep falling for number one, Diamond Miller. She has had a terrific tournament. 22 points in this one after 22 in round one. Well, that's big time. You, know, you want to have consistency with your effort and efficiency, and she's done that. Webb on the drive, lays it in. Under a minute 40 before the start of the fourth quarter, 67 to 49, Maryland trying to play their way into the Sweet 16. Trying to get to Spokane. Oh, whirling dervish of a move there by Owusu. Oh, not much you can do with Ashley Owusu when she is intentional with her attack to the rim like that. Brenda Freeze wanted a foul as well. I'm not sure she doesn't get fouled every time she touches it. See, it's almost like the Shaquille O'Neal rule where you get touched up because you're so strong, it doesn't matter because you're going to make it anyway. C will drop in a triple. Seven points for Carly. 
And under a minute before the fourth. This third quarter totally owned by Maryland. Here's Miller again. Around and out. Sellers tried to keep it alive. It comes free to Webb. Sellers closing very quickly. She will commit a foul. She was trying so hard not to. She was. She's amazed she got called for it. 39.2 to go. And both sides going to the bench with a pair of substitutions each. In this quarter, Maryland outscoring Florida Gulf Coast 22 to 13 to open it up. They have just been disciplined on the defensive end, Maryland has. That has been the difference. Yes, they've gotten their shots to fall, but boy, they have been really taking what Florida Gulf Coast wants to do offensively away. Batted away by Reese. Filling that lane and making sure nobody else does. Great anticipation by Angel Reese, just right there, flicking that ball out. Morehouse back in to run the show here for the Eagles. On the kick to Webb. Can't drill it. Angel Reese continues a very fine afternoon on her home floor. And one of these two will take that very long flight out to Spokane, Washington. Owusu down the lane does draw the foul here. But that's going to be one happy flight for somebody. Well, right now it's looking like Maryland, but still time on the clock and the way Florida Gulf Coast shoots the three. You just never know, but for Maryland, with five players averaging in double figures, you want to see that consistently displayed. And when you have back-to-back -back games like they've had, with all of their players on the same page that way, that bodes well for them moving forward in the tournament. Yep, and they've been good at the line, too, all day long. Owusu now at 15. So you're seeing that excellent balance. There's the heave at the horn. That won't go. And we are off to the fourth, 71-52 Maryland. Angel Reese has just been a phenom inside. Great hands and contact and the finish. And a woo-woo, ooh, a spinner and a drop in for. Final four and the championship Sunday, April 3rd. All games are on the ESPN networks and the ESPN app. Great to be with you here from College Park. Dave O'Brien alongside Christy Winter Scott. And underway here in the fourth. Another block there for Angel Reese, I don't think. And Morehouse saw her coming or heard her behind her. And she just cleared that one out there easily. Reese trying that patented scoop shot. She'll draw another foul. Spending a lot of time at that foul line. She has 19. Miller has 22. Owusu at 15. And now Bell will return to the floor for Florida Gulf Coast. And it's been a pretty rough day for her and for the point guard Morehouse as well. And Maryland at the line. They've made a living there. They are 18 out of 23. And that makes a huge difference in games, especially if this score holds and Maryland advances. You've got to be able to utilize those free throw opportunities as possessions, unguarded possessions that you need to maximize. And Maryland makes 76%. They're outstanding there. Bell will lift. Carl Semesco at practice yesterday said we really need to be able to make shots and they have not been able to do that here in the second half in particular. He also said dribbling a lot and passing a little is not going to work for us. But Maryland has forced them to dribble more than they've wanted to. Great control again by Urusu. When she gets by her defender, it's lights out. Yeah, let's forget it. So 8.45 to go in a timeout. She has 17. Their coach loves the effort and the performance today. Well, it has been all Maryland so far in the second half. Ashley Owusu finishing things once again.
Women's Championship, of course, in Minneapolis. Stanford, Kansas. Winner of that one to take on the winner of this one. How about Stanford? Fran Belibi throwing down a dunk. <laughs> Reese with the stop and the rebound. So she did it all there. And she was just so intimidating down in the paint. Great anticipation, clean blocks in there, no body contact. Reese swooping inside and another whistle. They just can't stop her. She wants to go. Going back to the line. Angel Reese, her mom played collegiately at UMBC. I actually played against her back in the day and her brother Julian Reese is on the men's team here at Maryland. A freshman just concluded his freshman season. And, and you said Angel's mom had a game very similar to hers. Yes, big time motor, big time rebounder. Not quite as tall, but just as fierce. And all of them, all three of them wear number 10. Well, this number 10 with another star turn, 21 points. About eight minutes left here at College Park. Bell with a long one. And the rebound is tipped out and back over to the Terps. Bell just not able to get in any kind of rhythm this afternoon. One of 11 from three. Just seven points, averaging 23 coming into this contest. And remember, after the first quarter, this game was tied 23-23. It was a back and forth affair in terms of just shot for shot being made by both of these great teams. Miller way off the line and too strong there. Rebound grabbed by Emma List. Morehouse coming back from that aching foot. Bell with a tough move. They've defended her very well all day, haven't they? They have just been blanketing her. No easy looks, no easy opportunities. And the one I wanted her to take, she was wide open and, and passed it off. Reese with the kick, Owusu. Get that line drive shot, and that's a triple. And right on the money. Bell to the other end and lays it in. 78-50. Owusu with 19. Maryland shooting 56%. They shot 59% in round one. They also made 50% of their threes in the first round and made 16 of 17 foul shots. That's going to be an offensive foul. And Reese thought a flop should have been ordered. But called a foul on her as Bell went down. Reese will take a seat for a while. Back to that play. Take a look, Reese with the ball here. Backs down and it did look like Bell may have taken the, the floor before the bump. <laughs> right, a little more acting there than an actual foul. I think so. But she slipped, it looked like she slipped and she was anticipating being hit hard. So I think she was bracing herself. Kendall Spray put on a shooting display in the first half, but they have silenced her in the second. And she's had foul trouble too. She's fouled here by Miller. Who's none too sure about that call. 6.17 to go. Devin Miller surpassed 1,000 career points in Maryland's last game against Delaware. And as we said, she was just tremendous in that bounce back game for her individually in terms of her efficient offensive production. And knocked in from three-point land by Kirsten Bell. She does have 12, a two for 12 from three. And on the other end, right back at it, the lay-in by Chloe Bibby. 17 fast break points now for Maryland. Just five fast break points for Florida Gulf Coast. And, and that right there, Dave, is the difference in this game. When we said it was going to be about pace and space and buckets falling. And it has really been Maryland's advantage especially in the second half. Bills with a lay-in on the follow. Five and a half left. 
And Maryland on top 80 to 59 and a whistle with 525 on the clock. And we're talking about Kirsten Bell who has declared for the WNBA draft. It's actually the day she hurt her knee. And this is where they size her up in the draft. This is Michelle having her number six. Really great names on that list. I and mean, you're looking at what Kirsten Bell has been able to do at Florida Gulf Coast, a two time ASUN player of the year. Just a phenomenal talent. First team in the conference the past two seasons as well. Transferred from Ohio State initially after her freshman season, but I think she has a tremendous upside to play in the WNBA. Just her skill set offensively. I know her size defensively may create some issues because she's been forced to play a little bit more post because of the lack of size that Florida Gulf Coast possess, uh, possesses, but I think she'll make a great WNBA player. Webb short, rebound comes right back to her. Nice save to see. Here's Bell again. And for Marilyn Miller with 24, Reese 21. Owusu has 20. Collins will stick that one. And if you had told Carl Smesco before the game that that's what it was going to look like with about five minutes to go in the game, he would have said, uh-oh. Right. And I coach with Carl Smesco as an assistant coach here at Maryland as Bell gets by. And, you know, he has the most calm, cool, and collected demeanor when he's instructing in practice, when he's coaching in games. But... He's the same way off the court as well. Always mild-mannered, but he is a savant in terms of his X's and O's with over 600 victories under his belt. Bibby will pick up the foul. 419 left here at Maryland. And the Terps playing with a lot of passion, a lot of emotion today on their home floor. It has paid off. Their stars have shined. They're looking at star, but watching Diamond the other day in round one closing on a trap. She went half the length of the floor against a point guard, overtook the point guard, got in front of her, and created a turnover with those you know, incredibly long strides and great defensive instincts there. It was amazing to watch that. It's always about energy, effort, and focus when it comes to this juncture of the season. And when you can have 65 combined points, and now Florida Gulf Coast sitting at 64 as a team, that speaks volumes to your connectivity. Well, Maryland into the 80s at 102 in the first round against Delaware. Here's Miller. That didn't touch anything. Acted as a pass, though, however, inside the Sellers, and she'll draw the foul. 3.36 to go. And Spokane is calling for Maryland. And we'll see who will join them there. Free throws today will a huge advantage for Maryland. 19 of 26 at the line and made 73 percent which is just about three percentage points off what they typically hit i love the confidence of cheyenne sellers she has a tattoo on her arm saying self-made her dad brad sellers he's a seven footer by the way he the mayor of aurora the mayor of aurora and he was the ninth overall pick back in 1986 to the chicago bulls Michael Jordan wanted Johnny Dawkins, a DMV, who uh, played at Duke. You always get that in. <laughs> I always have to get the DMV in there. But, uh, yeah, he played 13 years professionally, both in, in the NBA and overseas. She has the best pass we've seen in the tournament. Yes. Behind the back, gem in round one. Maryland is having a fun time playing at home. That's a blocking foul on the baseline with 3.15 to go. Let's go back to that. On Friday, this was a dandy. Oh, it was a dandy. And her dad, Brad, said, hey, when you see her throw that behind the back pass, you know she's deep down in the heart of her duffel bag. And she brought that one out. I asked her yesterday at practice, I was like, have you thrown that pass? Like, what does it take to get to that point with your confidence? And she said, you know, I threw one over my head like Sue Bird one time in high school. And I'm just glad they caught it, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's the same kind that's of That's the other part of it. That's the tattoo you're talking about, self-made. And self-made, it's not a cocky statement there. She said she has worked so hard. She got that tattoo two months into her freshman year here at Maryland. 
tie up 248 left and Maryland will have the basketball. Well, this is another top 25 opponent for the Terrapins in Florida Gulf Coast ranked number 23. That means 12 of their opponents this season including here in the tournament have been ranked in the poll. Yeah so tough. I mean when they went to the Bahamas they only had six or seven healthy players. I mean Faith Masonis another key piece to their team and rotational player for them is out this season with an ACL. And they only had six or seven healthy bodies when they're playing Stanford at NC State down there. Two losses for Maryland but not a lot of depth in those in those games at all. Owusu a little step back. It's kicked right back to Maryland. Benson will fire. Maryland crashing the glass and a foul as Sellers hit the deck. Just a little over two minutes to go. Maryland and their fans can start celebrating. Carl Semesco, another great job at Florida Gulf Coast. Out of Fort Myers, Florida. And ovations for both sides here as key players come out. Morehouse is out. Benzen, the graduate. She has more basketball to play. Kirsten Bell is headed for professional basketball. Number one for Florida Gulf Coast. 11 players for Florida Gulf Coast were transfers in, so not a lot of time down there, but time well spent for the seniors. And Carl Smesco has just done a phenomenal job with that program, and that will continue. It's their third time trying to get over the hump to the Sweet 16, and it won't be their last because they play a unicorn style of offense where it's three-point line or inside the restricted area when you score the ball. And they play with tremendous discipline, but just couldn't get the shots to fall today. In the Florida Gulf Coast, 235 wins in the last eight seasons. UConn at the top of that list in Baylor, South Carolina, and Maryland. And Florida Gulf Coast right behind them. But today, 11 out of 34 from three-point land. And that number needed to be higher. Well, they want to shoot 44% from three, at least 40%. Bell told us at practice and just off the mark. But credit Maryland and their length and ability to defend on their switches. And they were right there to contest most of those attempts. And particularly when Bell was shooting them, the star for Florida Gulf Coast, she was two for 13 from three. They're going to keep on firing them. As you said, they won't stop. No. Doesn't matter what the circumstances on that scoreboard are. No. Shooting arrows. But the celebration begins for Maryland. About to go to the Sweet 16 again. For Brenda Fries, it'll be the 10th time to that round in the tournament. Also six Elite Eights, three Final Fours, and a National Championship. Truly an elite coach. Well, she has just done an outstanding job here at the University of Maryland. And then to have the 06 champions come back to support the team, that's what it's all about. Well, you know, when Doris Burke and I were working together, the great Doris Burke, we covered a lot of Maryland games. And Brenda's boys were, yeah, they were just tiny little guys. Yeah. Now they're, what, 14 years old? And the twins, Marcus and Tyler, just turned 14. Does love hit that one. And a whistle with 34 seconds to go. 89-64, and now the Stars can become cheerleaders here for Maryland. Down the stretch they come. And you love to see that, and that kind of support. It's reciprocal, but it's expected, right? And that's what makes a good atmosphere on the team. That sets the good climate, that camaraderie and culture. Now Maryland about to pick up their 23rd win of the season. And knock off another in a top 25 situation. Which would be their fifth win against a ranked opponent. 
And a very good one in Florida Gulf Coast. In the end, Maryland was too much to handle for the Eagles on their home floor. Kozlova gives it up for Collins. And batted away. Florida Gulf Coast will get it across midcourt. And the final seconds here in Maryland. The Maryland Terrapins are on to the Sweet 16 as they knock off Florida Gulf Coast 89 to 65. Brenda Freeze in Maryland, they just own the second half. Well, they did it with defense, Dave, and that's why they're advancing on to the Sweet 16. Coming up next, number seven, Utah against number two, Texas. 89-65, the final score for Christy Winter Scott and our entire crew. Thanks for joining us here at College Park. Right now, L. Duncan in the studio.